Welcome back to Newsmaker Live. Thank you very much for staying tuned. We're talking about disasters and how you should prepare. And also we're talking about this latest strike that we had, Tropical Storm Chatal that passed over St. Lucia, just north of St. Lucia. So we got, we, did, we didn't get the full impact of hurricane, uh, of, I keep saying hurricane, <laughs> Tropical Storm Chatal. I, that's akin to your Ivan, uh, right? Yes, yes. Um, uh, the, the maximum sustained winds from what I had checked were, were like 50, yes. 50 miles an hour. And uh, I mean, considering this is not significant. Now I say that with you know, some hesitation because I know 50 mile an hour wind, what yes. it can do. J just imagine driving 50 miles an hour on the street, yeah. You can still turn a pebble into a missile. Yes. yes, yeah. So, I mean, you, you talked about Force Jacques, you talked about Chozelle, and, and we saw um, some of it in the news. What are some of the areas that are still very vulnerable? I, I know that Bexor and the Mark area, th these are areas that are so prone to flooding that any time a little bit of rain falls, the people have to hold their breath and look for higher ground. What is the situation there and, and what can be done to mitigate? In terms of, of hard, large infrastructure, I'm not an engineer, but I'm not sure what can be done. And, mm -hmm. and after Hurricane Thomas, I really looked at the Bexor area with new eyes and realized that it is a flood plain. Mm -hmm. And if nobody was living in that area, meaning that mankind hadn't occupied St. Lucia yet, you, that area, that I the, the, the river would just burst its banks into the floodplain and then contract back into its, its, into its path. Mm -hmm. That's what it's for. But, but we occupy the area. And what people have to do when they're building in an area that they realize is prone to flooding is put their building on stilts, elevate their home. Mm -hmm. Now. There's the temptation, of course, for the economic factor to build at the bot underneath, put right. an apartment and right. rent it. But then what happens is that if a flood comes, your apart the apartment that you're renting to someone then gets flooded. And so it's really a balance as to what are you going to put downstairs. But you really have to think about well, if you're going to put the apartment downstairs, then maybe you need to take some very heavy s um, flood insurance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, in, in, in terms of the amount of rain that we saw, how, how much rain did Chetal bring? I don't have the numbers. No, you don't have office. them yet. Okay. Yeah, because that, that would be significant. Of obviously, we, we did not, uh, the Bexar people were spared this time. And sometimes I believe that, you know, you know as some people would say, God is a solution. <laughs> because we are spared so many times, but yet we don't take the necessary precautions. Uh, the, the precautions that needed to be taken yesterday, what were those precautions? And, and we can talk about them now because we have passed safely um, through Chatal. But what, what were the precautions that needed to be taken yesterday? Well, and what precautions did people take? There are different precautions at different times. So obviously right now we need to be monitoring the weather reports. And as, as I said before, this is 2013. There is really no reason to say that you did not know a storm was coming. Um, it's on the, the, the news carries it, not just television, but radio. It's on the internet. You get mm -hmm. it on your, if you want, you can get it on your Blackberry. You can get it via email. It's out there. And f for you to say, um, you hear like that, somebody say, how come something happening? You should not be in a rumor mongering mode in the hurricane season. Mm -hmm. I can maybe forgive you when Christmas and is coming along and Valentine's, but from the time June first hits, everybody in the Caribbean should be watching the weather and see what's coming off the African coast. So that, that's one measure. Um, we mentioned about building. If you're building your home and it's in a floodplain, you need to seriously consider elevating it and keeping it on stilts and keeping your garage downstairs, maybe your laundry, things that are, are not high value mm. on, on the ground floor. There's insurance. Uh, many people say, well, you know, I've been paying insurance all these years and I never get anything for it. Amen, hallelujah, I never get anything for it because if you got something <laughs> for it, it means something went really bad mm -hmm. and now you have to kick in your insurance plan. And then what are you insuring for? So you insure for a hurricane and your house burned down and you vexed the insurance didn't pay you. But you didn't insure for, insur for fire, you insured for a storm. Mm -hmm. So you have to sit down with your broker and decide what it is you are insuring for. You look, you look at where you live. So where you live may be flood prone but not landslide. So you, you do your analysis, you, you talk to people. You may be new in the neighborhood. Find out from people who have been living in the neighborhood what happens. 
And then, of course, we talk about the shopping. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are some people that just live their life last minute. We at university and we hand in, we, we're doing the assignment the night before it's supposed <laughs> to be handed in. <laughs> Okay. So some of us just are last minute <coughs> people <coughs> and no matter how many times you say people please do some strategic <laughs> shopping. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are on the line before the thing happens <laughs> in the excitement and the adrenaline rush of shopping. Now to these people I'm, sa I'm saying if you were in that for Chateau, do not eat the food. <laughs> Box it, leave it in a corner. That way you will not if for something because we only, okay. only, only two okay. months have okay, gone Okay, done, done. Okay, done. You're talking about me. All right, all right. All right. I, I take, I take, I take my legs on. <laughs> We're not even halfway through the hurricane season yet. So please don't eat the shopping you did this week. But Just the hurricane shopping. Just put it in a corner for the rest of the. Of the, of the here's season. what. Here's what. I have this this huge can of of, of crackers, and um, right. hopefully it will last me through the hurricane season. <laughs> yeah, at, at, least wouldn't, wouldn't nibble at, it. at least I have that, you know. Well, no, I started nibbling at it, but hopefully it will last through the hurricane the season and, and have some food. During the next commercial break, to your viewers <laughs> and your listeners, check your cupboard mm -hmm. and look at the expiry dates on the items you actually have in the cupboard right now. Mm -hmm. Because in pre preparing for this year's hurricane season, I checked my cupboard and I was shocked that the tin of corned beef is expiring in 2015. Uh, yes. So and I thought to myself, well, how much chemical does corned beef have? My goodness. But that's another, that's, yeah, that's that's that, another that's discussion. That, yes, that's but scary. But the point I'm making is, is mm -hmm. that if you have that, then you don't have to go and buy it again. Right, right. So you just buy a couple of tins extra. When you're doing your monthly or weekly or your fortnightly shopping, you, you take an extra tin because you feel it when you're in the panic buying mm -hmm. that you're going to buy all these things. But if you are buying them over the months and weeks leading up to the hurricane season, these things obviously have a long expiry date. So you, you, you're accustomed to maybe buying two corn b um, tins of corned beef every two months. So you buy three. You use your two and you put the one aside. <laughs> now, in, in terms of you said don't don't eat them, right? I mean, bec but you'd have to replace well, them. Well, yes, eventually. that's why so you monitor the, the the expiry date. So what do you do? Do you, do you buy them for the hurricane season when the hurricane season is over? You you use yeah, them yeah, and then replace them, them uh, thereafter. Or you can keep it, yeah. Or you can keep okay. because the expiry date is so long, you can keep it for the next season. Or you can use it with bearing in mind that you need to replace it mm -hmm. in a timely fashion. In, in that hurricane kit, what exactly? And I, I know you have been talking about that a lot. What exactly? do you need what what are the essentials for your hurricane kit you definitely need to keep your your important your important papers now the the nature of important papers is that you use them all the time so you need to be in a position that when the system is approaching you know where the documents are and you can put them in a plastic container or a ziploc bag a plastic bag you can buy in a box that you can buy in any of the stores and so that you can move. A friend of mine actually referred to it as a layout. You know, the pregnant ladies always have that bag ready because mm -hmm. you don't know when the labor pain going to hit. You grab the bag and you run. That's what a, a colleague of mine mm. equated your disaster bag to. So when you're moving, you have the food and you have the water and you have the papers. Because a number of people for Hurricane Thomas lost their national ID cards, lost their passports. And we had to have a mechanism with the electoral office to ensure that people got their, their ID cards back because for various reasons they lost it in landslides in flood and just they lost it and, and mm -hmm. this is what happens mm -hmm. and the nature of what the, the, the 21st century is you need your ID, you need your mortgage you need your insurance papers you need your IDs you need your passports mm -hmm. and whatever else you may deem to be important yeah I, I mean some of us really need to take that stuff a little more serious you know putting these things away and making you need sure your first that aid kit, a little yes. first aid kit in there you need your mm -hmm. torchlight um you can buy the crank radios now you can buy the crank torchlights they're available in various stores here this st and then if you do like me you just pass it the cupboard you just scrape everything from the all the tins and you just drop it in the box mm. interesting now going back to this latest um experience that we had uh, there, there, there has been some criticism over the closing of school uh, on on Monday, and uh, the p the prime minister shutting down the country. Obviously, he would have made that decision. That is, the prime minister would have made that decision after consulting you as the national emergency management director. I mean, what what was the thinking that went into that decision, and why was that decision taken to shut down the country? I had to defend. Prime Minister Stevenson King, and now I have to defend Prime Minister Kenny Anthony. <laughs> um, 
you have the information in front of you that the storm is approaching and you have to weigh the information that you have at the time versus the consequences of what can happen and the overriding concern is human safety Mm -hmm. Not the fact that you have a shop and you want to make a dollar that day. That does not come into the equation. And I know a lot of people complain that they were not able to make a dollar yesterday. I'm sorry. As I said last time when I, when I was asked why um, Mr. King shut down the country, given the same information with the same consequences, with the question of do I need to save a life, the team will always recommend to the Prime Minister to err on the side of caution to save the lives of, sim of people on this country. Because it's not just the nationals who live here, but you have visitors who are here as well. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that the last time, and during Hurricane Thomas, some people um, ignored that order for the country to be shut down. Some business establishments actually ordered their workers to, to come to work. Um, what, what, what does the law say about that? I mean, in, in terms of the Prime Minister saying that there is a shutdown, everybody should stay in, inside, only emergency personnel should be on the streets. What, what, what does the we, law say? We, we have the procedure. Well, it's, it's backed up by the Disaster Management Act, and it's also in the protocols and procedures. And, of course, that is enforced by the police. Mm -hmm. Now, for which is unusual because for tropical storm shutdown, nobody called the office to say that the place was that there the were businesses open but on occasion not just for hurricane thomas but in the past I'm, I'm very ashamed to say for my country that businesses have ignored that order and when persons have called to say you know clinton still have a shop open i pick up the phone and i call the operations officer in the police force and i say clinton has his shop open Say thank you, Miss French, and before you blink, an SSU officer is in your establishment telling you you need to shut down because it's for your safety. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would you risk your life for a dollar? Yeah, but a number, a number of, a number of them were open during Thomas, and I found that strange. I mean, yes. I mean, you have the Prime Minister giving an order, and I, I guess at that point, the emergency powers of of yeah. uh, of the, the the head of government has have been an it's a national security yeah. issue it is a, uh, of, of a different type but it is a national security issue but what what i what i'm getting at is i mean some people may not understand that this is not a suggestion yeah thank you this yes. is not this is not something that they have an option on it is something that is demanded that is that is required of them that they they act in a certain way I mean, barring that, barring them obeying that order, or in the event that they do not obey that order, what sort of um, action can your office take well, it's in, not my in office. concert with the police? The, the police can arrest you. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they haven't arrested a few people. Um, but they can, they can arrest you. But what they normally do is that they just order you to shut down and order you to go home. Mm -hmm. I have in the past, because uh, I've been in this job a uh, uh, good while have told people go home and I tell him if your boss tell you anything tell him call me mm -hmm. so I can put the DPP on him. The, the other thing about it is if this order were to be given mm -hmm. and a business owner requires his employees to be on the job mm -hmm. and something happens to that employee what he's sort what, what liable yeah what, what sort of what, what sort of um penalties can be imposed. But I don't know what the penalties would be. Um, the legal eagles would have to decide mm -hmm. um, on that. But yes, and, and of course, and if you're unionized, <laughs> it, it gets real sticky. Um, because the head of the country, the prime minister, did not hide. It wasn't a secret <laughs> that said the country is shutting down. School shut down, airport shut down. There were small craft advisories, there were sea bathers advisories, and you have decided to defy that order for whatever reason that you wish to come up with, and then something happens to someone that you are responsible for vis-a-vis -vis your employees, you are definitely 
um, in terms of the law would, would I don't I, I could not quote to you chapter and verse but just off the bat I'm sure the labor code would, would kick in and now, then the criminal code and the civic code after that now you might say you might say no but I'll ask that question anyway uh, do you think that the, the, the country was shut down too early in terms of schools for example uh, students being sent home half day on Monday when, when the storm w was going to strike, the first bans would be felt, the, the, the first effect would be felt around 2 o'clock the following morning. I'm not going to second guess or what they call the, the Monday night coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, second guess the decision making process for the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. Because if I am concerned with the safety of the nation. You can imagine the burden on them when it comes to the children of this country. Mm -hmm. and, and they do not take the decision of closing school lightly. It would have been a serious discussion with the chief um, education officer and his advisors and then to, 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 make, to issue that declaration. The, the decisions are not made lightly, Clinton. You don't wake up the morning and say, oh, my knee's hurting me, let's close the country. Mm -hmm. that, that's not how it works. You have to have the science in front of you and some serious discussion. Um, it, it, a decision to shut down the country or a school is not a, a one-hour discussion, you know. Sometimes mm -hmm. two, three hours, the technicians are, are grappling. Um, sometimes you you in the discussion and then the new advisory comes whilst you're in the debate and then of course it's like carol on fire because th what the advisory is now saying is so completely different to what you were basing your discussions on on the first advisory and the second advisory now catches you in debate and it's a totally different story because whilst you are discussing what to do the storm has done something completely different mm -hmm. and so um when i have a prime minister who is new to the process, newly elected maybe and, and, and now has a storm approaching and they turn to me and ask me what's the process. I, s I say three things happen to The Met Office is going to tell you what the science is. Your technical people around this room because you have the chief fire officer, the chief medical officer, the commissioner, police, WASCO, Lucilek, you have technical people that are going to give you the pros and cons of the various decisions that need to be made but the final decision is yours. You have to say if we're closing the country or not, and, depend, and regardless of what your decision is, the technical people, the debate then ends, and the technical people execute your instruction. So if you decide that we are not going to, sh after all you've heard all the debate, we are not going to shut down the country, end of story. We're going to do what we have to do in, in terms of the approaching of the storm. If you say we are shutting down the country, then that is what we are going to do. But regardless of what the debate and the decision is, the final decision lies on the shoulders of the Prime Minister. And once he gives that instruction, the technical people execute. We're speaking here with the Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, Ms. Dawn French. We're talking about disaster preparedness and uh, Tropical Storm Shuttal in particular. When we come back, we want to discuss the actions of residents of the country. Usually what we see is when nothing significant has happened people revert to their old habits their old bad habits and not pay attention to advisory so we'll talk a bit about that and we'll be taking your calls after this break stay with us